be looking at um, several aspects. We're going to be looking at the, the Word of God as the seed, and then we're also going to be looking at the mirror, and then we're also going to be looking at the perfect law of liberty. Amen. If you have found your place, James chapter 1, verse 19, and through verse 25. If you would please stand to reverence the reading of the word this morning. James chapter 1, verse 19 through 25. Now, a lot of people ask, well, you know, do you really think, and, and by the way, our Wednesday night attenders, now you know that we covered the whole entire book of James um, on our Wednesday nights, but now um, I can't do all of those notes. Um, so it is a blessing on Wednesday nights to be able to be able to receive all the notes, but uh, time permits us uh, on Sunday morning a lot of times. Uh, but one of the questions is, well, you know, was James writing to believers? Well, let's start reading in verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved who? Brother. Brother. Now, who is he writing to? Christians, believers, born again, right? Believers. So when you read these passages, you say, well, that person must have been lost. No, no, and no. He's writing to brethren. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, he looks at himself, and he goes on his way, and straightway he forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be what? Blessed. You say, do you think? Yes. Blessed. That man shall be blessed. Who? The doer. Shall be blessed. Man, is that just for the men? No. Mankind. Christians. Believers. Brethren and sisters in the Lord shall be blessed in their deeds or in their works. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you today. For allow us to come to your place just to hear a portion of thy word. Father, I uh, pray for strength today. As I still have this old head cold, Father, I pray that uh, I'll be able to deliver the message to the saints that you would uh, desire for me to deliver. Father, I pray that my actions, words, speech, all, all these things, speaking ability, is, is not uh, influential on the people, but that your holy word, your word, your holy word, your sweet holy word, is what is in focus here today. <coughs> Father, we praise you and we glorify you here today. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So now this is, um, a lot of times people ask me, they say, well, um, and I've had in the ministry uh, preachers, new preachers, um, new pastors, new converts. Uh, what I mean by new converts, someone that has just gotten saved. And they come to me and they say, well, you know, I've been reading in the book of Obadiah, or I've been reading in the book of Numbers, and yeah, boy, well, hang on just a minute. Uh, let's go back and let's get a new convert. Let's get you in the book of John. Let, let's get you reading something that is easy to read, but yet very profound, but it begins to... Um, Awaken that new believer to the realities of the Bible, the, the resurrection, the death, the burial, the cross, all of these things, the love of God, all of these things. And then a lot of times they say, well, how do you put a message together? Well, how, how do you outline? I've been asked that um, a couple hundred times. Well, how do you outline the Bible? How do you, how do, you do that? And how do you begin, and, and Jason said this morning, it's one of my favorite things to do, and I know it's one of Jason's favorite things to do, is, and I talked about it Wednesday night, about the, the word of John, dwell. Uh, but sometimes that little word that's in the Bible, it, that is, it just really stands out. So you go to Greek, like Jason said, you went to your Greek lexicon, 
columns and things. And you begin looking, and that whole little word begins to develop the whole teaching message that you're teaching on. It's amazing how God's word does this. Now, I have some people that said, well, you know, I just do daily Bible reading. Um, I, I have questions, I have comments, I have concerns. Well, you should. Um, some just read it and not worry about what's in the text. And that's okay to a degree for just daily Bible reading, getting the word in your heart and mind. But now, a lot of times, the word, when it's in my heart and mind, it doesn't just process through and go back out the other side. I'll say, now, wait a minute. What did Paul say? Who was he talking to? Well, who was the believer? <coughs> These unbelievers? Uh, <laughs> what is the Holy of Holies? Uh, what is that Shekinah glory? What does Shekinah mean? There's all kinds of things when we read uh, the land of Canaan. Now, I wonder where that is at today. So there's all kinds of questions that we have, and I always tell everyone, write down your questions. Continue to do your daily reading. And a lot of times, the Bible, the Scripture, is going to answer Scripture. It does that many, many times. Uh, in the book of Revelation, they say, well, we can't understand, we can't know. A lot of times, in the book of Revelation, if you continue to read in the book of Revelation, it's going to tell you about the candlesticks. It's going to tell you about the seven spirits before God. It's going to tell you about the sea uh, glass before the throne of God. It's going to reveal these things to you. We just have to continue to keep reading. So once again, when we begin studying and we begin maybe outlining, preaching, teaching, all of these kinds of things, there has to be a method before even daily Bible reading, before Wednesday night, before Sunday morning, um, before any type of uh, reading that I do, I have to prepare myself in order to be able to receive the Word of God. It's a very simple task, but it's very laborsome. Because I have to give up things. Um, <laughs> Um, I have to add some things. I have to uh, change some things before I even get to my study. Well, let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever um, been hurt by someone? You say, well, everyone has. That's, that's human. Sure. Uh, how many of you have ever been mad? Well, that probably covers all of us. How many of you have ever been in, in, in such a way that you was uh, upset and all of these things, and you said, well, I want to get my daily Bible reading out of the way. So you pull up a chair at your kitchen table, you begin to read, and the Word just doesn't soak in. The Word doesn't really do anything for you. The Word just seems bland, and it doesn't help if you're in the book of Numbers or something. It, it just doesn't work. You, you close your Bible up. Now watch. You say, well, that was a boring passage. Why? Why was it a boring passage? This is the Word of God. The preacher keeps saying the Word of God, and it's His Word, and it's inspired, and it, it's exciting, and the Bible is alive. And I just, you did not come to the table prepared to receive. Amen? You say, uh, do you ever do that? Oh, I do that all the time. And then I've got to regroup my heart, mind, and, and think of what I'm doing and, and what I'm pulling myself up in front of. This is not the, the, the book about Tom Sawyer floating down the river on a raft. This, this is the Word of God. And to be able to soak in the Word of God, I've got to prepare myself before any outline, before a daily reading. Before all of these things, preaching, teaching, whatever it may be, I've got to prepare myself. And I want to show you in God's Word today, in James chapter 1, verse 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, now watch. A lot of people says this, well, this is how you should live your life. Well, that's awesome. And I think you could apply that in your life in the passage. But this is not 
the way of life that he was describing. And I, I think you can apply it to that. And I think a lot of people uh, says, well, you know what? You should be swift to hear. And your mom was going to tell you that you were born with two ears, young. Amen. And the slow to speak. You only got one mouth. You shouldn't be listening more than you're talking. Amen. And, and it goes for uh, as a child. Why are you so angry? What are you so angry? You need to learn to be compassionate and loving and caring. And, well, all of those things, I believe, are certainly in the Word of God. I do believe that it's a way of life, and you can apply this to our life on a daily basis. However, what you're reading in verse 19 is your reaction to the Word of God. You say, now wait a minute, I don't understand that. When you pull up to the table, to the couch, you pull up to a chair, an office, wherever you may uh, or love to, to read your Bible, when you come to the Word of God, you are to be swift to hear, you say. It's not just per se living, uh, although this would be, uh, be great, and, and I, I've been trying to get my whole household to live this way for years, amen? Did I get an amen there? Amen. I have a lot of week, the rest of me telling the truth, amen? Listen. When we pull up to this word of God, shh, be quiet. This is the word of God. Because it's holy and it's reverent. Well, well, yes, but listen to what the Bible has to tell you. This is what James is talking about. He said, now my mind, but beloved brother, listen. He said, be swift to hear. Slow to speak, and not only slow to speak, slow to rest. I've had people that have read the Bible before, and they say, well, you know what? I've read the Bible before. I've read that passage before. We're going back over that passage again. We've taught that passage again. And they seem to be angered, or they believe that they cannot do this or that in the Bible, and they're angry, and the Bible doesn't work for them. It's because, not because they might not be a, be a Christian, it's because they're not preparing themselves to read the written word of God. Amen? Be quiet. Reserve your speech. Listen. The action here is, is hearing and speaking. But there's also an attitude when you approach the Word of God that's controlling the action. Be what? Slow. Swift and slow. When you come to the Word of God and you pull yourself up, turn off the TV. Get off the Internet. Put your cell phone somewhere in another room. Sit down. Say, Lord, Lord, I'm going to pray to you that, that I am quiet today, that I am not swift to speak, and Lord, may I receive your word today. And Father, I might see myself on the basis of your whole word. And Father, let me not be discouraged or angry uh, because of, of something in my life that and I'm reading it in the Word. You see how the Bible becomes a mirror? You see, when we begin to sit down and look at the Bible, we've done it all backwards. Yes, you're looking at the Bible physically and you're picking up words and you're studying. I got that part. But as far as the Holy Spirit is concerned, the Bible is reading you. Are you like that? It reads you. So, my beloved brethren, James is saying, this is how you begin to uh, begin to 
read, study. Uh, the scripture says, many is dull of me. Uh, he read it in Hebrews chapter 5. Um, jo James is guarding us. Be slow. Slow. Slow down. Get all these thoughts out of your mind. Get all the stuff, all of the cares, the worries, all these things. Just, just get it out of your mind when you come to the Word of God. And there are so many times that we come to the Word of God with our mind already worried and clouded. Amen? And then we say, well, we're going to get something out of the Word. Or maybe we come to church. This also talks about uh, public reading because this letter would go into the church that James is writing here in the Word of God. Sometimes when we come into the church house, we say, oh, the preacher, this and that, all this, and I got traditions, and I got this, and I'm here. Uh, oh, Lord, it's public Lord, I've got things to do. And, oh, man, we just we read this passage. If we're like that, then don't expect to receive And we all get like that at times. We do. Um, I've been sitting in that pew, and I've been like that uh, sometimes. So let's move on. Look at verse 20. For we know the wrath, the anger of man, is not going to work the righteousness of God. Human wrath is not going to further spiritual anything. So there's a lot of people in this world that have so much wrath in their heart, anger in their heart, and you cannot come to the Word of God, receive the Word of God, and expect to do the righteousness of God with anger in your heart. You can't. And there's a lot of people that have anger in their heart all the way back from something in grace to what a little kid said to them. You know, get rid of all those things. The anger, get rid of all those things. Uh, he says, would you come to um, the Word of God. Now, why? Well, an angry man is not teachable. You ever come to church angry? I get an amen? amen. Mm -hmm. Come to church angry. What that woman said, cut me off at the stop sign. <laughs> Didn't even get my biscuits. <clears throat> well, I'm done until 9.45. I'm going in. I'm going to be late for church. I can't believe this morning. I woke up and, and I, you know, this is going on. Great. You come to church, you get here, and you're angry, and you are not teachable, according to James. Or oh, you'll learn things, uh, little things here and there, but an angry man uh, is not teachable. When we approach God's Word, we need to be ready to listen, we need to be quiet, we need to be teachable. That's how I begin to, before I have even got to chapter 1, verse 1 yet. I've got to prepare myself. Now watch, here's the seed. And I've got to be moving on. Look at verse 21. Uh, I told you there was going to be a seed, a mirror, and a law of liberty. Look at verse 21. Wherefore, now watch, your beginning, your beginning to pull your bootstraps up, your beginning to come as your Bible is laying wherever it is, in your hands, lap, table, wherever it may be, and you're beginning to come to the Word of God. Not to be a scholar. Not for a college degree. Not for uh, just mere education. You're not coming there just to get the Sunday morning Sunday school lesson so I can be done. There are times. Now, I'm talking about Bible study. I'm not praising self. When I began, we began on Wednesday night, by the way, in the Gospel of John. I have finished chapter 1 in the Gospel of John. I have, in chapter 1 in John, uh, a minimum of probably 80 hours of study. That's crazy. I can just read through there. Yes, you can. On daily Bible study, that's fine. Slow down. Shove everything outside. Sit down. Be quiet. And prepare to hear what God has to say. And 
that's what I do. And that's what I will do. I will get up sometimes uh, 7 30, 8 o'clock in the morning, I'll start studying. And at 2 uh, 30, I realize I haven't had breakfast. And then I'll get back up uh, from uh, eating, and I might take a break. And, and 3 30, 4 o'clock, I'll start back in. And, you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, Laura says she's already got on the work, already had dinner, already had all those things, and she says, Are you not coming to bed? And I'm still in verse 3. It's the love. It's not a job. It's not. I, I could come in here and just uh, swim through all kinds of uh, words and great speeches and shouting and be a cheerleader. And none of that is going to help you in your daily life. You'll walk out of here motivated and 20 minutes later you'll forget what the whole thing's about. That's the word of God. It is so thick and so wholesome. And I want you, according to what, how the Lord will use me, for you to get every drop of honey that's in here. Amen? Amen. Being a pastor is work. It is job. It is those things. But to me, that's a delight. You said, would you not spend time with Laura and the kids? Some weeks, I do not. Not much. Not much. She makes me wash dishes and start doing laundry from time to time. Amen. But I'm in this word. Now, so when we begin to look at the word, I have to prepare myself. Uh, putting away all filthiness, verse 41. Superfluity of naughtiness. That means overflowing of wickedness. And receive it with meekness. Uh, the engrafted, oh, there's the implanted word. Now, now what's the seed here? The seed is already in you. When you was born, born again as a child of God, the Holy Spirit came and dwelt within the life of every believer instantaneously the moment they believed in Christ. The Holy Spirit indwelt. The seed is in you. So when you pull up to the table and you begin to read this word, what you're doing is you're watering the seed that's already in you. But before you can water the seed, you've got to prepare the soil. You throw a seed, and the Bible says, in the rocky grounds and the thorns and the thistles and over by the way, it's not going to grow. And the cares of this world is just going to choke it. It's going to be fruitless when I come to the Word of God and I'm not prepared. I sat in my study for 30 or 40 minutes and walk away from there and the cares of the world are, are being upset about something or something's wrong. I'm trying to help somebody. The phone's ringing and I sat there for 30 minutes and read the Bible and can't remember what chapter I was in because I was so uh, upheld. Listen. The word, the seed, is implanted in you. It is engrafted. It is the implanted word. Now, what does this is this word able to do? It is able to save your soul. You say, I'm already saved. What does that mean? The instructions, the precepts, the commandments that are in this word is for you to be spiritually healthy. Amen. But it's also for you to be physically healthy. It is. Now, you can't go down, and, and, and I, I pray for these. I do. Uh, my father was a very bad alcoholic. Very bad. To where my mother said they had to feed him a teaspoon of water at a time to get him nursed back from the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone has liver damage because of that, if we would have read in the Bible early and stay away from strong drink and stay away from this and stay away from that. Stay away from this and don't do that. Don't be with them. Stay out of that crowd. Don't go down there. Don't conform to the world. Maybe, just maybe, you think that we would live just a little bit longer. Amen? So the word uh, is as a seed. 
James is saying, remove your moral and pure attitudes and actions. And the, the true word here is just as you take off soil clothing. You can. So what is James saying? Come to the word of God, putting off all sin, your wickedness, the ways. What you said yesterday, how you acted the other day, and how whatever, uh, something happened that morning, and, and you had fallen into sin, or something you were mischievous in, or something you went back to, and, and get out of that. Get away from it. You've got to get away from the sin. You've got to be forgiven of that sin. In order for you, for that word, to begin to fill your heart. We cannot come to the word of God in such a way that we still have the sense of smell within our body. Within our mind. Within our heart. So he says, get rid of all of the sin. How do we do that? We put off the sin nature and all of these things we've talked about many times. But listen, Lord, I pray, before I get into this word, Lord, any wrongdoing, I, I've stepped over the line, I've transgressed, it, sin, however, iniquity, however you want to explain it. Lord, I ask your forgiveness for any sins that I may have done. And Father, here's the ones I know I've done. And Father, and also forgive me for the ones I don't know I've done. And now you're beginning to pray your prayer of the soul. And when you sit down in the Word of God, you're cleansed, you're coming there, you're receiving it with meekness, you're receiving it with the spirit of gentleness, and also you're beginning to water that seed that's already engrafted in you. So number one, we see here that we have to uh, be ready. Now, receive the word. You're nurturing, uh, watering the seed. Uh, there's a huge difference. We have information all over this world. Information everywhere. You can get on Google or whatever you want to do, uh, Facebook, whatever you want to do, media. Uh, you can, I mean, information is at your fingertips. Everybody has so much information. But the world's information does not have transformation. Transformation only comes from the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God transforms you. The world may give you knowledge. The Bible gives you knowledge. But the Word may give you knowledge. In the world, the, 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 the world has many uh, faucets of information. But it has no transformation. This Bible is, should be so important to the Christian life. You should be so addicted to the pages in your Bible that it hurts you to put it down. Transformation. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scriptures give my inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. Let me break that down real quick before we move on to verse 22. Inspiration of God. It means that this Bible is literally breathed from, uh, if you want to get technical in the Greek, it's the saliva from God. It is God breathed. It's profitable for doctrine. What does that mean? It tells you what to believe. It, it, it tells you that it's genuine. Uh, a profitable for reproof. It tells you when you're incorrect. It tells you uh, what's not right. Uh, it, for correction. It tells you when you're right. Either that or it's going to tell you how to get right. Amen? Uh, profitable for instruction. Uh, for training. It tells you uh, how to do that which is right and how to stay right. This is an amazing book. And now, when I go into a workplace, I work on uh, big air jets, uh, airplanes, Huge, huge airplanes. I worked on steam boilers. Uh, some of you could not fit in this room. It's not high, high enough. Very important detailed instruments and the equipment. And I carried around with me the instructions, the steps, the procedures, the, uh, the definitions of and all of these things that concern these 
equipment, this equipment that I worked on. If I had just walked up to an airplane and said, well, ma'am, walk, welcome aboard. We celebrated your birthday in church. Go ahead and get a, aboard this plane. This plane is fit for flying, and I should be the one to know because I have no idea what I'm doing, and I just serviced it. Come aboard. <laughs> this Word of God is in us. It's the seed. It's in us. It's engrafted. It's in us. Water it. Water it. Water it. Um, look at verse 22. Whoa, well, now here comes the obedience part. You, you see, once you get in, you read, you read, you read, and it says, be loving, be kind. This is my greatest commandment. And I give you another commandment. That's the love others that I love you. And, and that you do this, and you do that, and, and, and you honor your parents. You, you so much of this word of God. You see? And James will begin to say, not be hearers only, but be what? Doers. Doers. Don't get mad at the preacher. Amen? Obedience to the word. Not hearers only. Because you deceive yourselves. Now watch, what does that mean? Uh, what does it mean is this. Continue to be doers of the word. Uh, serve God, but not in bare minimum capacity. If you come to this church service, if you read the Bible on your kitchen table, and you begin to let the Word come into your heart and life, and do nothing with it, then why read it? That's what James is saying. Be you, prove yourselves, doers of the Word. To who? The world? Well, that's good. But to what? God has given you the love of God. The Son of God gave his life for you to be able to have what you're holding in your hands. On earth. On earth. I believe in my heart. All my heart. The nation of Israel is very very much so um, one of God's loving nations. Not that we're not. not, that we're not. They still dig for the Ark of the Covenant. They're still looking for all these artifacts, but the most beautiful and the most precious artifact in the entire world to God, your Father, is His Word. Because He knows it is able to save your souls he knows it is able to train you up in righteousness. Why? So we can please Him and glorify Him. Um, obedience to the Word, um, not hearers only. If you do, you're going to deceive yourself. You're deluding yourselves. Look at verse 23. We've got to move on quickly here. Now here, because if any man is a hearer of the Word, so that's the engine off verse 22. Now see if you can find the mirror here. Here's the man in the mirror. And no, it's not the pop song. Amen. It's the word of God. Um, if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer. So, so here it is. You can be a hearer and be a doer. And you can also be a hearer and not be a doer. Now, what do you think that the word of God promotes for you? To be a hearer and a doer? <coughs> yes. Now look what he says here. I love this. Now the word of God we've seen as a seed. Now you're going to see the word of God as a mirror. If any man uh, be a hearer of the word, and he's not a doer. That's man or woman. That's mankind. That's a believer, beloved brethren. That's Christian. If this Christian is not a doer, he's like a man. Beholding his natural face, this one, the one he was born with. Do you know what the word there actually means is natural face? You're looking at your Genesis in the mirror. What does that mean? The book of Genesis? No. <laughs> the, life of the, the face that she was born with. And from the very beginning, he was born with this face. That's, that's the Genesis. Beholding takes a personal note of what he saw. Where's the mirror here? Beholding 
his natural face in a glass that's mirrored. So here I am. And we, we have mirrors, double mirrors in our bathroom. And I can confess to you that I'm in that mirror and I'm on my way a lot quicker than she is. Some of us just have to gaze in that mirror and all the women said, So when we look at this mirror, it, 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 it takes a personal note of what we see. Now, wait a minute, you say, well, I look in the mirror and I call myself, well, let, let's begin to look at the spiritual. When you look in the mirror, in the physical, you're going to see, you, you need, you know, uh, hair number 59 is out of place, and all these kinds of things. Um, the women use a mirror all the time to put on the war paint. Amen. Amen. Men, what do we do? Get out of bed. And we just do like this with water and say, well, honey, I'm going to work. And we don't even pay much attention. But here, this man, this Christian, uh, is, is really looking into the mirror. But however, James was talking about the Word of God. His natural face. He, he sees his natural face of Genesis, the face he was born with. Now, Verse 24, he, for he beholdeth himself, he's really, really looking at something in this mirror. But yet he goes his way. And, and, and immediately he forgets who he is. Now, how many of you has got to go back home and look in the mirror to see what you look like? I mean, you, you have a pretty good idea. This is talking spiritually. When I look at this word, boy, it's going to tell me who I am. <coughs> it's going to see who I am, where I've been, what I'm doing, what I'm not doing. And I keep looking in this mirror, and I'm attracted to this mirror, and I'm looking in this mirror, and the more I look in this mirror, the more I see myself and about myself. Some things I like, some things I don't like. Just like if you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror, and if you don't like the way your hair looks that morning, you're, you're going to redo that uh, hair up there. Some of us don't have to worry about that, amen? But now listen, we're, we're going to change. We're going to, oh, this, this, this shirt just doesn't look good on me. And then they'll come back and stand in front of the mirror. How does this look? You know. Um, thank the Lord, I never do that. Amen. But now, it's the same thing that we see here. Sometimes we need to make changes. We're looking in that mirror. Um, because if we don't make the changes, if we don't look at ourselves, uh, who we are, how we are, in the Word of God, you're going to go and you're going to set this Bible down and you're going to go right outside, you're going to go uptown, you're going to do this, you're going to be on the phone, you're going to be involved here, go to work, whatever it may be, and you're going to forget that you even read the Word of God this morning. So we see the seed, we see the mirror. Um, I wish I had more time, but we're out of time. Law of liberty. Whoso looketh into, now that word looketh, it means a deep look. Take a deep look into the perfect law of liberty. And, and continue there. Now, that means stay in the law of liberty. Uh, and it means not a quick glance. We want you to live in this law of liberty. Uh, and you see, you say, well, how do you know about this and all these connected in the Bible? Well, it says here, and don't be that forgetful here, the one that just looked in the mirror. Don't, don't, don't be that. And also, don't be the one in the verse with the seed, uh, and all of this where you can hear and you don't do. Don't be that. You see, the seed is in you, so you come and you get rid of all the sin that is in your life. And when you get rid of all the sin by asking for forgiveness, we are not sinless, but we like to sin less. Amen. So, so we get rid of all the sin. Lord, forgive me as I prepare to read your word. And Lord, as I forget rid of all the sin. Lord, when I look into the mirror, who do I see? And what do I need to change in my life? And then now, the perfect 
law of liberty. This Christian is a doer of the work, and this man shall be blessed. Now, what is this law of liberty? It's the word of God. Those who Christ has set free is free. Liberty. Here at liberty. Um, he that looketh, apparently, which means uh, it pictures the man, that man in that mirror. If you want to go back to that mirror image, he, he's bending over a table and with a hand mirror. He's bending over a table and he's got a mirror and he's looking down and he's. I don't know if he's looking for something or what he's doing, but all of a sudden, his face in the mirror connect. And he begins to say, wow. And when we pick up the word of God, let us see ourselves. Not as here or doing, doers, right? Doing those things that is pleasing to the Father. How do I approach the Word of God? No, I don't say this verse every time, but I want to share it with you before we dismiss this to this. Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts. <laughs> and if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting, that is a prayer before I go into my word study, Bible study, devotion, Sunday morning, Wednesday night. As we continue on, I pray, I said, Lord, don't let me forget you that the people here. Lord, I do want to be blessed, but Father, I know I need to prepare my soul. Why? When you live in Christian liberty, we have the seed that's inside of us. That is the word of God. We have the mirror that tells us who we is and why we is and all of these things of who we is, right? When we have all of this that tells us to the pinpoint who we are and what we need to be, where we, you know, all of these things of life. And then now, once you see that the seed is inside of you, you got the soul prepared, you're receiving the word of God, you look at yourself in the mirror, and you're going to make any changes in your life. And now you're ready to go out and live through the world in the law of liberty by the word of God so others can see your faith in your heart. James tells us, and I got this off, uh, I, I forgot to write down the preacher's name. I'll have to, if you want it, I'll look for it. But it says this. Uh, Jesus tells us how to prepare our lives appropriately to approach God's word. Now, this is kind of, uh, kind of hard, so listen here. Come to the word with your ears open. Come to the word with your mouth shut. Come to the word with your spirit teachable. Come to the word with your sins cleansed. cleansed. Come to the word with your heart ready to receive. And come to the word with his knowledge and obedience. Wow. I think you pinned that pretty good, amen? Uh, but I want to close here. D.L. Moody, many of you know D.L. Moody, um, the Chicago Bible Institute that he had founded and everything. As I told you before, I went to Chicago with a dear friend of mine, a, a friend of ours, and, and he, he's a dynamic um, uh, individual. Did he ever get to come to this church? I can't remember. No. Yeah. Dynamic friend, loves the Word of God. And we was up there, and I said, Scott, please take me to the uh, Moody Bible Institute in Chicago downtown. He said, you want to go there? I said, yes. That's where D.L. Moody is. And he said, well, I went to school there. What? You didn't tell me this? He said, yeah, we go up to the upper end of here, and you go there. I said, just drive there. I don't know where I'm at in Chicago. Just drive there. So we go down, and I was so excited. Uh, we stood in front of the big brick building in Chicago, the, the, the Chicago, the, the Moody Bible Institute, and, and, and I was like, Scott, you got your camera, and, and we took pictures, and we lost every bit of the film, <laughs> amen, every bit of the film we missed, but here's one of the stories from D.L. Moody, it's called The Blind Man of the Langley, D.L. Moody said this, I remember reading of a blind man who was found sitting at the corner of a street in a great city with a lantern beside him. Now remember, this is a, a blind man. Someone went up to him and asked what he had a lantern for. Seeing that he was blind and the light was the same to him as the darkness. The blind man replied, I have it so 
that no one may stumble over me. And then he continues to say, Dear friends, let us think of that. Where one man reads the Bible, a hundred read you and me. That's true. That is what Paul meant when he said we were to be living epistles of Christ known and read of all men. And boy, they can read us like a book. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. They will. I would not give much for all that can be done in my sermons if we do not preach Christ by our lives. If we do not commend the gospel to people, share the gospel with to people, by our holy walk and conversation, we shall not win them to Christ. As again, a player of some leader comes today. <clears throat> 